Okay, so if you remember our previous video, we discussed the inverse of a matrix, and we found a beautiful result for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. The question is now, if a matrix is invertible, a square matrix of course, and it is larger than a 2 by 2 matrix, how do we find the inverse? Well, here's how we do it. So an algorithm is simply a sequence of steps, a finite sequence of steps. And so here we'll see how, quite simply, row reduction will allow us to determine if A is invertible or not. And if it is invertible, it will give us the inverse. So here's the algorithm. So you take an arbitrary square matrix, so it could be a 5 by 5, a 20 by 20, it doesn't matter. The first step will be to create an augmented matrix. Augment A with I. So you add to A the entire identity matrix of the same size. So if A is n by n, I is also n by n. And now you simply row reduce, so you apply the Gauss-Jordan elimination. Now write just G, J, E for Gauss-Jordan elimination. So you row reduce A. Every operation applied to A, you also apply to I. In the end, A and I will be transformed. A will become its reduced row echelon form, which we call R, and I will become some other matrix, which we will call B. And now we know there are only two options here. The reduced row echelon form of A is either equal to I or not equal to I. So option one, the reduced row echelon form of A is not the identity matrix. If that's the case, if R is not equal to I, then A is singular. The inverse of A does not exist. On the other hand, if the reduced echelon form of A is I, the implication is that not only A is invertible, but the inverse of A is actually B what happened to I as we apply the sequence of row operations. So B actually is the inverse of A. And that's it. It is that simple. Augment A with I, row reduce A, apply the same row operations to I. Once you reach the reduced echelon form of A, if it is not equal to I, A is singular. If it is equal to I, B is A inverse. Now we won't prove this yet, but let's look at just two examples of how this actually will play out. For simplicity of the calculations, we'll take in both cases a 3x3 three three matrix. The idea is the same for larger square matrices, except the calculations are longer. So let's take this matrix A to B. 1, 3, negative 2, 0, 4, 1, and negative 1, negative 2, 2. So we have here a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay, let's apply the algorithm. The first step is to augment A. with i. Of course, the same size as a. So i will be here 3 by 3. So we augment a with i. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And I will simply row reduce a to its reduced row echelon form. Okay, the first operation will do row 3 plus row 1 plus row 1 We are only changing the third row, so our first step should be to recopy the first and second row. So 1, 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 4, 1, 0, 1, 0. And now we apply this row operation to the entire augmented row. So we do row 3 plus row 1, so we'll get negative 1 plus 1, 0. 
negative 2 plus 3, positive 1. 2 plus negative 2, 0. 0 plus 1, positive 1. 0 plus 0, 0. 1 plus 0, 1. Now, to obtain our second leading 1, let's not multiply row 2 by a quarter. Instead, let's swap row 2 and row 3, as we already have here a 1. So we will interchange the second and the third row. We copy the first row, as we are not changing it. And now we're swapping, so we get 0, 1, 0. 0, 4, 1. We're swapping also here, so we'll get 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0. We have a second leading 1. Let's scale this 4. Row 3, minus 4, row 2. We copy the first two rows. And now let's apply the operation. 0, 4 minus 4, 0. 1 minus 0, 1. 0 minus 4 times 1, negative 4. 1 minus 0, 1. 0 minus 4 times 1, negative 4 again. Okay, so we have to now, we have introduced the three leading ones. Everything below are zero, so we have to kill the entries above to get the reduced Roichelon form. So let's kill this negative two. Let's do row one plus two, row three. We are only changing the first row, so let us recopy the second and third row. Let's apply the operation, so we'll get 1 plus 0, 1, 3 plus 0, 3, negative 2 plus 2, 0, 1 plus negative 8, negative 7, 0 plus 2, 2, 0 plus negative 8, negative 8. Now we're missing one row operation. We have to kill this 3. And we'll do, of course, row 1 minus 3, row 2. We are only changing again row 1. Let's recopy row 2 and row 3. I'll bring it up here. And now let's perform the final row operation. 1 minus 0, 1. 3 minus 3, 0. 0 minus 0, 0. So the row becomes 1, 0, 0. And finally, negative 7. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 10. 2, negative 0 is just 2. And negative 8, negative 3 times 1, negative 3 is negative 11. And if you notice now, we are done with the row reduction. This is the reduced row echelon form of the matrix A. This is R. And this is B. What happened to I? as we apply the same row operations. Well, what is our conclusion? The reduced version form of A is I, and so indeed A is invertible, and B is A inverse. And so the inverse of A will be this matrix.
And this is not obvious, right? Here's the matrix A. And what we now have is A is invertible, and this matrix is the inverse of A. Now at this stage, we haven't proved the algorithm. We'll prove it later on, but we haven't proved it. So we should check that this actually is A inverse. So let's multiply A with A inverse and see that we get I. And we know the order at this point doesn't matter. We can al also either do A times A inverse or A inverse times A. And as long as the result is I, we are good to go. So the matrix A was 1, 3, negative 2, 0, 4, 1, negative 1, negative 2, 2, times what we hope to have found is A inverse, negative 10, 2, negative 11, 1, 0, 1, negative 4, 1, negative 4. Both are 3 by 3. The result will be a 3 by 3 matrix. Let's see if it is actually equal to I. First row, negative 10 plus 3, negative 7 plus 8, positive 1. Check. Then we get 2 plus 0, 2, minus 2, 0. Negative 11 plus 3, negative 8, plus 8, 0. So far, so good. Second row, second row, 0 plus 4, minus 4, 0. 0 plus 0, plus 1, 1. 0 plus 4, 4, minus 4, 0. So far, so good. Third row, positive 10, negative 2, positive 8, negative 8, 0. Negative 2 plus 0, negative 2 plus 2, 0. And finally, fingers crossed, 11, negative 2, 9, negative 8, positive 1. And so indeed the result is I. And so this matrix is indeed the inverse of A. So we have now checked that the algorithm, at least in this case, gave us the right inverse. Let's look at one example. One other example. So what if we take again a 3 by 3 matrix, and we'll take it to be 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1, 4, 3. Again, we augment I, uh, A with I. And we start the row reduction. So we already have a leading one in the top row, row 3 minus row 1. We copy the first and second rows. We're not changing them. One minus one is zero. Four minus one, four minus three, one. Three minus two, one. Zero minus one, negative one. Zero minus zero, zero. One minus zero, one. We have our second leading one. Let's scale the entry below it. Row three minus row two. And now let's see if something interesting happens. We copy the first and second row as we're not changing them. Zero minus zero is zero. 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 0 in both cases. Negative 1, negative 0, negative 1. 0 minus 1, negative 1. 1 minus 0, 1. And what is interesting here is that we have a row of zeros. So we don't have to continue the row reduction of A until we get the reduced Roechelon form. As we have a row of 0, we know that the reduced Roechelon form of A will always contain this row of zeros 
Therefore, it will never end up being I. And so A is singular. So even if we were to compute the reduced wish on form, and in the end also obtain B, R will always contain this row of zeros, and so it will never end up being I. And so B is just this random matrix because A is singular. And that's it. The inverse of this square matrix does not exist. So always keep this in mind. If you ever at any point in the reduction, if you're trying to find the inverse of a matrix, have a row of zero popping up, you do not have to complete the row reduction. The reduced solution on the form will always contain this row of zeros, and so it will never end up being I, and so the matrix is singular. And that's it. This is how you find the inverse or not for any square matrices, simply using row reduction. Keeping in mind the shortcut formula in the case of a 2 by 2 matrix that was discussed in our previous video.